Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So I recently posed the question to my audience on Instagram, what is your boyfriend or husband's favorite perfume on you? And I had a few hundred people answer the question and I sat here and tallied up all the results and actually the results really surprised me and there were so many perfumes that got so many hits that I had to do a longer list. I was hoping to do a top 10, I had to extend it to a top 20 because there was just that many perfumes that got such high numbers of votes and then there was also a lot of honorable mentions so it's actually a pretty exciting and fun video I'm really excited to share with you guys the results the last time I did the video about Instagram deciding favorite and least favorite perfumes they did pretty well you guys really seem to like that so if you haven't seen those videos I will link them down below for you as well and if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we do usually talk about perfumes we also do a little bit of luxury minimalism home decor decluttering fashion things like that if that is something that interests you, I would love if you would consider heading on down and subscribing. Also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram. With that out of the way, let's get started in today's video. Okay, so like I mentioned, there were a few honorable mentions. So these are 14 perfumes that I will just quickly rattle off for you that received actually a lot of votes, but not quite high enough to make it into the top 20. So in no particular order, we have a few from Victor and Rolf. We have Victor and Rolf Bon Bon. We have Flower Bomb, which is one of my personal favorites. Flower Bomb Nectar also got quite a few hits. Chanel Coco Noir got quite a few hits. Glossy you got quite a few hits as well which really doesn't surprise me because that is a beautiful feminine musky sort of you but better perfume we have carolina herrera good girl and all of its derivatives so good girl supreme was mentioned good girl legere was mentioned and the original good girl was mentioned quite a few times as well we have viva la juicy and all of its derivatives as well so viva la juicy gold pink couture those ones were mentioned a few times Armani C got quite a few hits and I was actually surprised it wasn't up higher on the list. It didn't quite make the top 20. There was another Armani that kicked that one out. We have Mugler Alien which got a couple of hits. We have La Nuit Tresor that got quite a few hits. Clean Skin from Clean Reserve got quite a few votes. Livia Bell got a couple of votes, not nearly as high as I was expecting that it would. Maze and Zier For Your Love, which is a niche perfume, which I don't think that a lot of people probably know about, but that one is also a beautiful perfume, and that one actually got a couple of hits as well. And Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue and Light Blue Intense did get a couple of hits, but they did not make it on the top 20, which really surprised me. I was really thinking that Light Blue would be somewhere super high up on the list, and it was actually fairly low compared to all the rest of the other perfumes. So yeah, those are your 14 honorable mentions and let's get into the top 20 that got ridiculous amounts of hits. And I will share with you if I have the bottle, I will show it to you. If I don't have the bottle, I will just show you a picture as usual. And yeah, let's get started. So in our number 20 spot, we have Burberry Her. Now this one is one that's in my collection. If you guys watch my channel, you kind of know my thoughts about this one. This is a really sweet, feminine, strawberry, musky scent. I can see why a lot of men would like it. I can see why it gets so many votes. It's a very well-liked and complimented fragrance. Personally, it is not a favorite of mine. So this one I probably will be decluttering at the end of the year. I'm just kind of holding on to it to see if maybe my taste will change, but personally I do not love this perfume. But I can see why it got so many votes. It is a really popular fragrance. So that is in our number 20 spot, Burberry Her. The second one I will insert a photo because I do not have this one in my collection. And these two I kind of lumped together. So this is YSL Libre and Libre Intense. So those two perfumes I do not have in my collection. They are very sort of aromatic, lavender, orange blossom, vanilla type of fragrances, but they're quite different from Mongerlan and Mongerlan Intense, which are actually two of my favorite. These ones are very heady. They are really sophisticated, very sexy, amazing performance. I can see why people would like them. I can see why men would like them as well. You guys, again, know how I feel about that perfume. Those perfumes in general, um, I can't have them. They just actually make me nauseated for some reason, but I can see why they are so highly voted. I think they smell very powerful, very boss woman, very sexy, very sultry, very like rich auntie, and they really command attention because they do have such good performance. So in our number 19 spot, YSL Lieb and Lieb Intense. In our number 18 spot, I'm happy to report my all-time favorite perfume, <laughs> 
which is Miss Dior 2017. So this perfume in particular got a few votes. Some people did not specify which version or which year it was, and some people did specify that it was Miss Dior 2017. So that is what I'm gonna go with because the new one is fairly new and I really don't know if that one I don't know how men would feel about the newest one. I think they would think it's nice, but anyways, this is a beautiful rose patchouli and orange fragrance. It's sweet, it's sexy, it's sophisticated, and sadly, it is discontinued. This is my all-time favorite perfume ever, ever, ever. If you guys watch my channel, you know that. Um, definitely one of my favorites, and I think this is that perfect combination between classy meets very sexy because it just has that sexy, rich girl, sophisticated quality to it, but it's also very timeless and very elegant. Absolutely stunning, and I'm so happy that it made it onto the top 20. So that is our number 18 spot, Miss Dior 2017. The next couple are ones I do not have. So in our number 17 spot, actually this surprised me how many votes I got. This is Killian Rolling in Love. So this is actually a very sultry, beautiful, kind of a powdery almond fragrance. It's very sensual. It has almost that lipsticky, makeup-y vibe, but very deep and very, very sexy. I actually did used to have this perfume, you guys, and when I did, my boyfriend did go crazy for this. He loved this. So I can totally understand why I got so many votes. And the reason I don't have it anymore, I think I just had other nighttime perfumes I preferred more for some reason. It's a gorgeous perfume though, and I can definitely recommend it for a date night. It would be a great date night perfume and definitely can understand why I got so many votes. So number 17 spot, Killian Rolling in Love. Number 16 spot is Pink Sugar from Aqualina. This is one I also do not have, but it is one that I continually revisit every few months because part of me wants it in my collection. This is the iconic cotton candy, caramel, super sweet, girly, perfume. If you know what this smells like, you know nothing smells quite like Pink Sugar from Aqualina. It has amazing lasting power. It is, I think, probably a very sexy perfume, but we maybe don't always view it as that anymore because it's kind of old and it's kind of dated. This perfume was actually my signature scent when I was about 21 years old, 22 years old. I loved it. I raced through at least one bottle of it. Um, I thought it was phenomenal and it still is kind of iconic and I do kind of want it back in my collection because I know it's a compliment getter and I know it has good performance, but this is one that currently I do not have. So not surprisingly made it onto this list. Men seem to really like it and that is our number 16 spot. Number 15 spot is Angel Muse. You guys, I was not expecting this perfume to get so many votes. I didn't realize that it was such a well-liked perfume among men. I really didn't. This is a really heavy, chocolatey, hazelnutty, I believe, vetiver scent. I believe those are the main accords in it. So it's very earthy, it's very rich, it's very seductive. It smells almost like a heavy, earthy, cupcake of some sort, but with some nuts mixed in. It's a really nice perfume and I should really go back and revisit it, but what I found for myself personally was this one was just a little bit too heavy for me. Um, I did have it in my collection for some time and I did get rid of it, but I can see why it got so many votes. It's very strong, it's very heady, it's an attention grabber, it's kind of gourmand, it's very sensual, so definitely can see why Angel Muse made it onto this list. At number 14 spot, I'm very happy to say that two more of my favorite perfumes made it onto this list and that is Mon Guerlain and Mon Guerlain Intense. I did lump these two together because they got equal amounts of votes. So between these two they got exactly the equal number of votes and they are so similar that I decided just to lump them together for the sake of this video. So if you have not smelled Mon Guerlain or Mon Guerlain Intense, they are beautiful, sensual, feminine, lavender, vanilla perfumes. They also have a bit of a freshness to them. The Intense one in particular has has a bit more of a deep, sensual, slightly sweeter, more vanilla -like, almost, I almost want to say white chocolatey touch. Like there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a white chocolate touch somewhere in the background in here and I really love it. It is one of my favorite perfumes. You can see that I have pretty good dints going in, I mean they're not huge, but I have dints going in both of these bottles. Absolutely love them. They're very feminine. They're very comforting. It's like that, again, it's kind of that perfect mix between a vanilla perfume you would love to smell on a woman, but it's also very comforting, very relaxing, very familiar. Um, yeah, and I think it's the lavender in there. It just has that calming effect. It's like lovely and pretty and beautiful and feminine all at the same time. 
absolutely stunning. So I'm really happy that both of these perfumes did get quite a few votes. So number 13 spot, I couldn't believe how many votes this perfume got. Tom Ford Black Orchid. I was not expecting this perfume to get so many votes because to me, Black Orchid is very out there, very strong, very almost pungent, very potent, very different, but it has a sexiness to it. It definitely has an underlying sexiness to it. So if you haven't smelled this perfume, Black Orchid is kind of like a gourmand, earthy, spicy, floral, everything. It has a little bit of everything mixed in with it. It also has truffle. Um, it's a very unique perfume and it was actually, I think, Michael Jackson's signature scent, which I always tell people that tells you everything you need to know about it. It's very different. It's very interesting. It's kind of intoxicating. It's very unforgettable. It's an unforgettable fragrance and I can see why men would like it and it's just kind of iconic and personally, my, my partner, I think he would think it stinks, but it's a very polarizing perfume um, and personally I have not been able to wear that one yet. I keep going back and revisiting Black Orchid hoping that one day it'll grow on me, one day I want it, but I think it would be a perfume that I would get and then it would just sit there. So anyways, in our number 13 spot, surprisingly to me, Black Orchid from Tom Ford. Number 12 spot goes to Paco Rabanne Olympia, and this is one that I do have, and I absolutely love it. You can tell how much I love it because of the amount of juice that is missing. This is definitely one of my boyfriend's personal favorite, favorite, favorite. If he had to pick his top five favorite perfume for me out of my whole collection, I think this would definitely be on it. And I can understand why, because this is a very sensual, it's a really sexy, salty vanilla perfume. And let me actually just take the cap off because I love this perfume so much. Personally, this is also one of my favorites. Yeah, I can see why this is such a highly voted perfume. This got a lot of votes, you guys, and it's just super sexy. It also has great lasting power. This was a blind buy for me in the beginning of 2020, and I still love it just as much today as I did when I first blind purchased it. Such a good blind buy. <laughs> yeah, and men love it, and it's a very like powerful boss woman confident kind of a perfume as well and yeah really good lasting power you can wear this any time of year great for date nights great for the day absolutely love this one so i can see why olympia got so many votes and that is in our number 12 spot number 11 you guys not surprising in the slightest we have brazilian crush shiro says 62. so yeah this one beat out a lot. This one also almost made it into the top 10 and it doesn't surprise me at all you guys. This is a delicious gourmand pistachio salted caramel fragrance. Super super sexy. My boyfriend also goes crazy for this. He absolutely loves it. It's delicious. It's sweet. It's a little bit salty. It almost smells a little bit tropical beachy but without being like coconut dominant. Yeah, I can totally understand why this made it to the top of the I mean, this even does something to me, okay? Like, I would vote this up. This is, this is such a good, such a delicious smelling fragrance, you guys. And I personally like to layer this with the cream. And also, if you mix this with the Shirosa 39, I believe, the coconut one, it's absolute heaven. I like to wear this one and that one layered together. And also the Boom Boom Cream and the Coco Cabana layered together. Amazing. Trust me your men will go crazy for it. In our number 10 spot, we have Delina from Parfum de Marly. This actually surprised me a little bit. Not really because I guess the people who follow me really love perfume. I don't think this is a super mainstream fragrance. I think it's becoming more mainstream because YouTube and other social media are probably hyping it up. But I think if you would have asked people five years ago what your favorite, your boyfriend's favorite perfume, I don't think anybody would have said this one, but it's definitely gained some popularity over the last few years. And this is a beautiful, feminine, very sultry, musky rose fragrance. There's also rhubarb and lychee in the opening, so it is a little bit fruity. It's a little bit tart. It's very unique. It also has incense in it. It has a bit of a woodiness to it and it has this super sensual, clean, feminine musk. It is just absolutely intoxicating and beautiful. And this perfume took me a minute to get on board with. I did not like this when I first smelled it. It was one of the very first niche perfumes I ever smelled. I was expecting something different. Um, I was mostly influenced by 
YouTube, of course, I saw quite a few videos, people talking about this perfume, loved the bottle, absolutely felt like I needed the bottle in my collection, and when I smelled it, I was completely underwhelmed two years ago. Fast forward to today, it is one of my favorite perfumes. I can't imagine not having this one. It is just stunning. Um, one of the most unique and beautiful rose scents I've ever smelled. Not surprising that it would make this list. I wonder what men like about it though, because it's not like your mainstream caramel, pistachio, you know, strawberry. It's it's not like a pink sugar type of perfume. It's a very different, sultry, sophisticated. Anyways, I won't ramble on too much, but this is our number 10 spot, Delina from Parfum de Marly. In our number nine spot, we have two perfumes that pretty much tied, and I do not have either of those perfumes. That is Jean-Paul Gaultier La Belle and La Belle Le Parfum. Now, I did have both of those perfumes. I did eventually let both of them go. The original La Belle is a very sweet pear vetiver vanilla scent. It also has leather and a couple of other notes in it. It's a very sultry, sweet, heavy, sticky kind of a scent, but super, super sexy and lasts for forever amazing performance the le parfum it's more of a um a berry like deeper sweeter like nighttime version it's not so it's not so light it's just more of a nighttime version of the labelle that one actually i can attest my boyfriend loved the La Belle Le Parfum. Absolutely loved it. I probably should have kept it just to wear for him because that's how much he loved it. It's one of the, and I didn't dislike it. It's not that I disliked it. It was just very heavy for me. Both of those perfumes were a little too heavy and too strong for me. Um, but I wouldn't mind revisiting the Le Parfum because that one definitely was a hit. Number eight actually surprises me a lot, you guys. This is Armani C. Fiori. This is a discontinued perfume, and I really thought that the original Armani C would be higher up on the list. This is one that I do have. I really love this fragrance. I believe that it has black currant and or maybe blackberry. It also has vanilla. This is kind of like your sweeter, milkier, sort of milkshake version of the original Armani C. It does have that Armani C DNA, but it is more berry and creamier. It's a, it's a creamier berry version. It's beautiful. This is a perfume that actually really surprises me that it got so many votes from their partners because it doesn't strike me as particularly, you know, date night perfume. It strikes me more as like everyday pretty um, feminine. You could wear it for a wedding. You could wear it for a special occasion. You could wear this one to work. You could wear it for a date night. Like to me, it doesn't come across super sexy, but but it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful, feminine, pretty perfume is what it is. Really unfortunate that it's discontinued. Such a hot seller. So many people love this. I really don't know what they're thinking over at Armani by discontinuing this one. Next up on the list, we have Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. This one doesn't surprise me, and actually this one and Coco Mademoiselle Intense both got the same amount of votes, approximately. I would say that this one beat out the Intense by just a couple of notches, probably because this one is more popular, so more people would have been around it and complimented you on it. Um, but this is a very uh, soapy, citrusy, sexy, again, orange tonka bean patchouli. Really reminds me a lot of Miss Dior. I can see why both of them made this list because they are very quintessentially feminine, but they have this classy air about them. If somebody walks by wearing Coco Mademoiselle, they just smell like a million bucks. And this is personally one of my favorite perfumes as well. Yeah, I just love it. There's just something about this perfume. It's clean, it's soapy, it's classy, it's sweet, it's feminine. Definitely can see why this got so many votes pretty high up on the list as well. Number six is a delicious almondy vanilla that I no longer have, and that is Hypnotic Poison from Christian Dior, specifically the Eau de Toilette version. So the Eau de Toilette is the only one that you can really find right now if you go into any of the stores, which is probably a good thing. The Eau de Parfum is a little bit heavier and more licorice-y, I think, and it's not everybody's cup of tea. The Eau de Toilette is very popular. This was actually one of my signature scents as well. In my early 20s, I went through a bottle or two of this, and it's a very heady, intoxicating, hypnotic, really, as the name would suggest, 
um, almondy vanilla perfume and there's nothing quite lip like hypnotic poison if you've smelled hypnotic poison uh, you know what I'm talking about so yeah not surprising that this one made it high up on the list it's a very sexy perfume amazing for date nights I actually would like to revisit that one because I did get sick of it I wore through so much of it that I got really sick of it but it is an amazing fragrance and it's one that I thought would always be a staple for me starting off our top five top five you guys these were the five most voted for and let me tell you these perfumes beat out all the others by a landslide I'm talking two or three times as many votes so number five spot we have Valentino Donna born in Roma does not surprise me in the slightest this is a delicious sweet berry woody vanilla there's something about this perfume that is so sexy and it fits the branding and it fits the bottle so perfectly Valentino is very like edgy I love the rock studs it's very classy and feminine but it has an edge to it and this is one of my personal favorite perfumes um, yeah there's something about this one this is also one of my boyfriend's favorites you can see there's a pretty good dent this is a, a really easy grab and go perfume if I don't know what to wear if you're thinking of like what is a perfume that a really attractive girl wears she wears born in Roma <laughs> that's what she wears yeah, it's just, it's just good. You just can't go wrong. So I can see why this made it so high up. This is in our number five spot. Valentino Donna, born in Roma. Number four spot, one that I no longer have and so far I don't regret it. I wonder if I will change my mind one day, but it is Baccarat Rouge 540. The infamous one in the red bottle with the gold juice, the one that costs, you know, $300, $400, Baccarat Rouge 540. So this is a very sweet, resinous fragrance. Some people describe it as smelling like band-aids. Some people say it smells like a dentist's office. Some people say it's burnt sugar. Some people say it's cotton candy. But imagine sugar or cotton candy growing out of a forest somewhere with a beautiful stream running by. To me, that's what Baccarat Rouge is. So it's very vibrant, it's very airy, it's very different. It's unique and beautiful and long lasting. It's an incredible scent. I can see totally why it made so high up on this list. My boyfriend also really liked that one. It wasn't ever one of his favorite favorite, but it was one that he really liked. Personally, I also really like this perfume. The reason that I got rid of Baccarat Rouge, and I still have some people ask me sometimes why I got rid of it, I just realized I could live without it. And also there's a couple of other perfumes that smell so similar that are a little bit more affordable. So if I want that vibe, I can get it from another perfume. Again, don't quote me because I'm only human and I very I very well one day may change my mind and want Baccarat Rouge back in my collection. I'm not gonna say that I won't, because you know your t your taste change over time. So anyways, number four spot, not surprising, Baccarat Rouge 540. When my partner and I were actually on vacation, we could smell this on so many people, so many girls, they would walk by and they would just be reeking of Baccarat Rouge 540 in a good way. And we could always pick it out. And my boyfriend would always be like, oh, she's wearing that, that Baccarat perfume. And I was like, yep, she is. <laughs> All right, and the last three perfumes are ones that I have in my collection. And this is our number three spot. You hate her, but she's here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> black opium the interesting thing about black opium is that it gets votes for most loved it gets votes for most hated it gets votes for the sexiest it's a very controversial polarizing perfume so yeah in our number three spot we did have black opium and all of her brothers and sisters and I do have three black opium perfumes I also have the travel size of the new illicit green which I really like Obviously, as you can tell, I am a black opium lover. I do like black opium. This is the iconic, very sweet coffee pear jasmine vanilla fragrance. Personally, I think it's awesome. I really like it. It is one of my favorites. Um, I also have the black opium extreme, which is more heavy in the coffee and the chocolate accords. It's not so much about the pear jasmine vanilla. It's more about the coffee and chocolate. And then we have the black opium Nuit Blanche, which is a little bit more lactonic and milky and creamier. And it's a little bit more, I think, sophisticated. It's not quite as sweet as the original Black Opium. Um, unfortunately, that one is discontinued. So when people were voting for Black Opium, 
the majority went to the original, the majority of the votes went to the original, and then there was a few that specifically said Nuit Blanche. I don't think anybody said Extreme. I think it went towards the original and the Nuit Blanche. Those were the two that got the most votes. Not surprising, you guys, this is a really sexy, deep, intoxicating, sweet, floral, delicious perfume, and I can see why people's boyfriends and husbands would love this perfume on them. Personally, my boyfriend doesn't love it, but that doesn't really mean anything. Um, so yeah, I love this perfume. Number three spot, Black Opium and the Flankers. Number two spot, Ariana Grande Cloud. Now, not surprising in the slightest, very, very popular perfume, very sweet, feminine, um, delicious perfume. Also smells very similar to Baccarat Rouge 540. So this is partly the reason why I no longer have Baccarat Rouge because if I want that vibe, I can get it for about $60, which, is a little more affordable to me, although it doesn't last quite as long. This particular bottle is not mine. This dint is from my 11 year old daughter. <laughs> I gave her this perfume because I didn't think that I was going to wear it. I didn't love it all that much, but it has grown on me. This perfume is growing on me. I also have the intense version. That one is really growing on me. This is a delicious coconutty whipped cream, um, sweet gourmandy fragrance. It also has, I think a little bit of a woodiness in the base. And I think there's also lavender in the opening, a little bit of lavender in the opening of this one. Yeah, this does not surprise me in the slightest, in the slightest why it would be so high up on the list. My boyfriend personally does really like this one. Super popular and I can see why it got so many votes. So that is our number two spot, Ariana Grande Cloud. Now before we move ahead, take 2.5 seconds and see if you can guess what the number one spot went to. I'll give you I'll give you a couple seconds. It shouldn't take you very long. <laughs> it's pretty predictable. Number one spot out of all the perfumes out of the, I don't even know how many perfumes were mentioned. The one that overwhelmingly by a landslide got the most votes. It beat out Ariana Grande Cloud and Baccarat Rouge by about double. It beat out Born in Roma. It goes to Kaali Vanilla 28. So you guys, I am not even kidding with you. I There were so many people who mentioned this fragrance and that makes me happy because this is one of my personal favorite, favorite, favorite perfumes. So this is a brown sugar vanilla scent. I probably don't have to tell you what it smells like. It's very popular. You've probably smelled it. You probably own it. Um, it's a very feminine, beautiful vanilla perfume. It's not a straight up vanilla. There's also vanilla orchid in here. Um, there's, I think, amber or woodsy notes. So this is just a really, really sexy, beautiful vanilla orchid brown sugar fragrance. Yeah, and definitely not surprising in the slightest that it made it to the top. It's one of my personal favorites. Haven't really asked my boyfriend's opinion on it. I think in part because I'm scared. If he said he didn't love it, I would be devastated because it's one of my faves. Um, but yeah, doesn't surprise me in the slightest, you guys. Kaylee Vanilla 28 by a landslide. Number one most voted favorite perfume from your boyfriends or your husbands. And that's the last one in today's video. So that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you really enjoyed hearing these results from my Instagram. Of course, I want you to keep in mind that this is obviously swayed by the type of audience that I have, the people who wear certain perfumes. Obviously, you can't get a compliment if you don't wear a perfume. So there might be a lot of other really great perfumes that are out there. These are just the ones that obviously people are wearing and hence their husbands or boyfriends have an opportunity to then compliment on them. So there are a few biases. This is not meant to be like a meta analysis of the greatest perfumes on the planet. Planet. This is just what people have reported that their partners really like on them. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you very soon in my next video and bye for now.